So let's uh, think about our various average cost measures. Um, uh, we're going to calculate average cost for each different component of our costs. We've talked about fixed costs, we've talked about variable costs, and now we're going to think about calculating our average cost for both of those um, components of our costs. So our average fixed cost, we've already talked about it, you take your total fixed cost of 2,129,000, divide it by the number of megawatt hours you generate, and that's your average fixed cost. Average variable cost is just your total fuel cost divided by the total number of megawatt hours you generate. And of course, your total variable costs are going to go up as you scale up the, as you increase the capacity factor of the plant, uh, and so will your megawatt hours. Um, and so our average variable cost for this plant is just the total variable cost divided by the megawatt hours we generate. Now. What's interesting for us next is that there's a, a really, uh, there's a constant relationship between our average total costs and our average fixed costs and our average variable costs. Our average total costs are just the sum of our average fixed costs and our average variable costs. So for any given capacity factor, we can uh, calculate our average total cost by adding up the average fixed cost that we face, that monthly payment we have to make, plus the payment we make per megawatt hour generated. So at any given capacity factor, we're going to add our average fixed cost and our average variable cost to get our average total cost of output. And we'll have a picture of that in just a second. But it's a, it's a relationship we'll come back to time and again as we go through our cost calculations. So, um, again, our average, we, we talked about total variable costs, then we defined average variable costs, which is our total cost divided by the number of megawatt hours. Now remember, for simplicity, I assumed that we have a constant heat rate. Well, given this assumption, it's always going to be true that the average variable cost is constant at every capacity factor of the power plant. So since the heat rate is constant, then the average cost of generating another megawatt hour is going to be the same at any capacity factor of the power plant. Now I want to emphasize that in a real power plant, the heat rate is not constant. This is a special assumption that we're using just to make things simple for our examples. Uh, but again, it's not going to it's not going to harm our thinking about cost in any way. And we can always bring variable heat rate back in when we think it's important. So, but I just want you to keep in mind that we're making a special assumption that makes our average variable cost constant because the heat rate is constant at every capacity factor for the power plant. Next we get to the measure of cost that is every economist's favorite measure of cost, and that is marginal cost. Uh, if, if any of you know an economist, you'll have heard them talk about marginal costs. Uh, marginal cost uh, is um, uh, a, another measure of how costs change as we change the capacity factor of the power plant. So the question we want to start with is, what, how do my cost change if I generate one additional megawatt hour of electricity? And this is our definition of marginal cost. Marginal cost is all, for, at, at any capacity factor, we ask ourselves, what would the cost be if I decided to generate one more megawatt hour? And that's a measure we're going to call marginal cost. And you can see right away that the marginal cost is something that would depend on the heat rate of your power plant. If, that, if the heat rate can change, then your marginal cost will change. If you have a really high heat rate, then adding one more megawatt hour of electricity will require burning more fuel than if you have a low heat rate. And so your marginal cost is something that will change over the course of uh, adding 
to the capacity factor of a power plant. But again, I'm assuming that capacity factor is the same for all capacities from a power plant. So what that means is, for simplicity's sake, we have a marginal cost that's going to be the same for every capacity factor that we're running the power plant. And again, this is a simplifying assumption just to make our examples easier to work with. Uh, and it's not really going to change the, uh, our conclusions about when, and, uh, when to operate a power plant or when to think about investing in a new power plant. Uh, well, of course, every time we think about building a new power plant, we're going to think about as an engineering issue, well, well, what, what capacity factor are we normally going to want to run this power plant? Because you're going to want to make sure that at the expected capacity factor of a power plant, you're at a nice low heat rate. Otherwise, it would be really costly to run, as, as low as that kind of power plant can run. Otherwise, it would be more expensive to operate than other similar power plants, and it wouldn't be cost effective. Okay, so we've assumed the heat rate doesn't change. If this is true, then the marginal cost and the average variable cost are the same for a power plant. And uh, it's really important to point out that this is a special case that the marginal cost of operating a plant and the average variable cost of operating a plant are generally not the same, but again, for our purposes, for thinking about when to run a plant and for thinking about when to build a plant, this is not going to be a really harmful assumption. Uh, again, when we go back to our engineering task, we'll want to worry about this, but when we're thinking about the issue of when to run a plant or when to invest in a new plant, uh, then it's not going to be too harmful assumption to think about uh, that we're going to be running that plant at a reasonably lo uh, low part of its heat rate curve, where its marginal costs are low and its average costs are low. All right, so we're, the fuel costs to generate one more megawatt hour from a power plant are going to be the same whether we're running at a really low capacity a medium capacity or a high capacity for the purposes of our example. Okay, so now we have a picture of marginal cost of this power plant. Uh, given a constant heat rate, the marginal cost is the same for each additional megawatt hour generated. Uh, and again, you can think about it as being constant over a reasonable range operating range for a given type of power plant. For a baseload power plant, you're going to want to run it about 70% or 60%. For a gas peaker, you're going to want to run it, you're going to end up running it around 30% or even less than 30%. Uh, and so you can think about the heat rate we're thinking about is the heat rate at that, at that preferred operating range for a power plant. Um, now, when we start talking about different kinds of power plants, of course, one of the first things we're going to realize is that different kinds of power plants have different marginal costs. And this is going to turn out to be a really important measure for us in thinking about how to manage our generating assets. Which ones are we going to run? Uh, when do we decide to build a new power plant? But uh, just to take a look at the graph, uh, Remember, we have a fixed marginal cost because we have a fixed heat rate assumption. In this particular case, we have a marginal cost of about $25 for, um, for at least in this picture. We have a marginal cost of about, say, about $25. And that's the same at any capacity factor for this power plant. All right. So, um, now, I want to go back to our 500 megawatt sample power plant. Uh, what I have now is a picture of our average fixed costs and our marginal costs, but now drawn on the same, on the same graph. So you remember from before, our average, our average fixed costs are just taking that $2 million monthly payment and dividing it by the number of megawatt hours we generate. And for any given capacity factor, we have a certain number of megawatt hours we're generating at, with our 500 megawatt power plant. And so our average fixed cost curve is going to have this nice downward sloping um, curve. 
our marginal cost and our average variable cost curve is uh, just a constant amount for any capacity factor for the power plant. The next picture we have is bringing our average total cost back into the picture. Remember, average total costs are just the average variable cost plus the average fixed costs. So on the previous graph, I had my average fixed cost and my uh, average variable cost or marginal cost curve. And on this graph, I've just added those two curves together, and that gives me uh, my average total cost curve there. Let's take as an example 50% capacity factor. The average total cost is just the sum of the average variable cost and the average fixed cost. And that's true for each capacity factor on this graph. So a, a couple more points I need to make about the relationship between average total cost and average variable cost or marginal cost in our example. Uh, in this example, the average total cost is falling, of course, uh, while, and, and we talked about the reasons why that's true. And the marginal cost is constant because we assumed a constant heat rate. Uh, and another thing that's important to notice is that the average total cost is everywhere above the average variable cost or the marginal cost. And that's because the average total cost is the sum of the marginal cost and uh, the average total cost is the sum of the average variable cost and the average fixed cost. So the average total cost is always going to be above the marginal cost for every capacity factor. Uh, it's all, there's always, uh, the average total cost is everywhere above the average variable cost and the marginal cost.